Hey guys, I'm back. Um, yesterday we, we split out a bunch of uh, pieces of ash for ash handles. Well, this is one of the pieces that I split out. It's relatively straight till you get to about to about right here. And this is where we're going to cut it off. Um, we're going to make a handle out of this for a uh, hewing axe that I need to use for a project. And I just showed it on video I think last night I posted a video and it's Paltz Brooks hewing axe. Um, I got some projects this summer I want to use this on, so I, I figured I'd put a handle on it and get it done and over with so I'd have it in handy. Um, probably make a leather sheath for it too, but I'm not going to do that on camera. But anyways, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this this piece and I'm going to stick it in the, in the uh, vise. And just cut this off. I'm actually going to cut it off just a hair long. There's a little knot here, but I don't think it's going to be in the way at all. And uh, anyways, we're going to cut this thing off. And all I'm going to do is clamp it in, in my blacksmithing vise. And uh, you'll get a bow saw and cut this thing off. So let me go ahead and do that, and I'll be right back with you. Okay, so I'm back, and uh, I cut it off and this is our board that we're going to make the handle out of um it's relatively straight uh the grain is running absolutely pretty good out of there it's got a little curve in it but that that's okay um same with the other end the grain's running okay get it on the camera here can't see with the saw cuts but it's running up and down too um this thicker end it's a little thicker on this end it's like oh inch and five eighths or so thick um, that's going to be our butt handle end, and then this end up here will end up being, because it's an inch and a quarter thick, it'll end up being the uh, end we put the eye on. Um, it's 16 inches long, it's going to be a 16 inch handle, and the handle is going to be for this hewing axe right here. Um, I want to keep the handle relatively short on it because... Uh, this isn't that heavy of an axe, and this is going to be um, just for basically light duty hewing and stuff like that. I have some bigger hewing axes if I need to really do something heavy. And most of these hewing axes came with, um, I don't know if I even have a handle sitting here that looks like it or not. You know, hold on a second, let me grab a handle. Okay, I'm back. So most hewing axes um, come with with almost this style of handle it, it has has the nice taper on both ends it goes right up into a uh, ax style eye and then they you know they come down into a butt at least most of the ones that i've seen on the market anyways from back in the day um, nowadays people are putting all kinds of handles on their hewing axes because you know it is what you it, you do what you want so nowadays People are putting, they actually, they're putting handles like this on their hewing axes, which I'm not going to do. What I am going to do is I'm going to set this hatchet up so that it's got this style of a uh, handle up top rather than, rather than having the taper both ways like on this one. And the reason for that is because when I hold this axe up here nice and close, it doesn't really feel the way I like it. Um, it's hard to explain. It just depends on what, what you like. But when I hold an ax like this, which is quite a bit wider and uh, it just, it just feels better when you're, when you're up close and you're using it up close. So we're going to go with this style of uh, handle at the top. So it'll end up coming through there like that. But then, instead of having this handle come down like this, this handle is going to come out and it's going to sweep up like that a little bit. And, of course, we're going to have to put the palm swell on the back of it and all that stuff, too. But, uh, so basically, it'll almost be, and I hate to say it, do it like this, but it'll almost be more like this, in a way. I mean, this, this part will be like this, but this part is going to sort of rise up, sort of like that. Um... And uh, that's just the way I, I, I want to do this handle because I'm, I'm going to use this for hewing, but it's going to be for uh, light duty hewing, almost in the carving sense. So um, 
I don't need a, a, a 20. I've, I've seen them with, oh, I shouldn't say 20, with like 16 or what is it? I guess they are 20 inch handles. They come with the big long handles too sometimes and I think they are about almost a 20 inch handle. I don't need anything quite that long for it. Um, actually, I, I had thought about just putting a handle like this on it, but uh, like I said, I don't really like that grip that well. This It's okay for an axe like this because you know you're you're just it just works for this axe but for this axe i, I want to do something a little different i want to be able to get a good grip up tight and stuff so that's what we're going to do um anyway so the first thing i'm going to do is i'm going to get our piece of wood and probably lay the axe on it like so and sort of just trace my handle out and see where i'm at so uh, let me go ahead and do that and I will get back to you. I'll probably use like the end of this axe as sort of a pattern and then I'll probably like eyeball the rest of it somehow, some way. So it's, this, is, this part is more like whatever you want to do, whatever it feels, whatever feels good for you in your hand type of thing. Okay, so... Um, Kind of hard to tell from the light of this angle. Okay, I don't know if you can. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I got I got it roughed out right along here and along here. So basically, all I'm going to do is start knocking this handle out. Um, I roughed this thing. I got this marked out, and it's it's extra big. It uh, really doesn't need to. It's not going to end up being this big, but I left extra stock on it just so I can I can have the extra stock if I need it. Um, I'd rather have some extra extra stuff there just in case because of the fact that you know once you take the wood off, you can't put it back on. So let me uh, get this camera turned around at a different angle so you're not blinded by the light. Actually, it looks better now. I don't know what happened there. But uh that way you're not blinded by the light and i will uh go ahead and start carving this handle out um first thing i'm probably going to do is just put a wedge in it right here and just split this chunk off because i don't really need it on there anyways so let me go ahead and do that actually right now kind of overkill but it just happens to be here and it's out for me splitting out the pieces of it yesterday so I'm just gonna <laughs> split this so that I have you know plenty of stock on it but yet I don't want to be here carving forever and that'll work good One more tap. Rather than try to axe all that off by hand, we'll just do that. Ooh, yeah, maybe. Well, okay. I guess we gotta go just a little farther on that. There, that's better. And I don't know if you guys can. There. And of course, we got more firewood which is a plus. Can't turn down the firewood. Okay, so now, put that aside. Now we have this thing all split out. And you guys can't see me at all. Okay, that's probably better. So now we got this thing all split out. And you can see where I got about I don't know, about a quarter inch or three eighths, sometimes a half inch, all the way around this whole thing. So now I'll just take my ax and I'll rough it down to about that dimension because that's already a little heavier than I want it. And then from there, it's it's a matter of matter of doing a little carving, putting it in your hand, see what it feels like. Do a little carving, putting it in your hand, see what it feels like. Um, I was gonna try to make this handle pretty much traditional because it goes with my with my uh, Halt's Books collection, and then I thought, you know what? Um, 
the head's not going to change, but I can change the handle and I'm fine with that. So, you know, so I, I, at least I think I am. Most all of my uh, Hallsbrook's axes, I try to keep original handles and stuff on or try to make original handles for them because I uh, really like keeping them original. But in this case, this is going to be a user. Well, they're all users, but this one's going to get used a lot because it's a carving style axe. Whereas the bigger felling axes and the and the 20 inch hatchets and stuff, they all get used a lot too, but they don't get used as much as the rest of them because I've got a lot of like 20 inch pack axes so everything sort of gets interchanged every once in a while. That's what it is when you got way too many axes and only one person using them but it's all in fun. So anyways let me go ahead and get the axe and stuff out and I'll start carving this uh, handle down so it starts to look something like a handle instead of a block of wood. My whole theory on this is carve it until you're get as close to the line as you can comfortably so that you don't screw anything up. If you don't feel that confident in your axemanship, then uh, don't get that close to the lines. You know, you can always uh, get the whittling knife out and whittle a little bit off. And for goodness sakes, keep your dang thumbs and fingers out of the way. This handle is actually, this wood's actually got a natural curve in it this way too with the grain, which it works out good. I kind of laid the axe out that way on purpose. That way uh, it follows the grain all the way around the whole handle. So uh, that's going to work to my advantage there, which is a good deal. Okay, that's almost down to the line, except for right in there where that shoulder is. I think I'll work that out with a knife. This is basically to the line. I still have to cut this off right here. I'll do that with a saw. Um, let me go ahead and take, you know what, let me go ahead and get the knife out and we'll finish this shoulder out a little bit. And then, and I, I think I'll cut this end off at the same time. Let me go ahead and shut the camera off. All I'm gonna do is basically cut this off right here and then, uh, as you, you can see my, actually you probably can't at that angle. Let me see here. Well, 
Anyways, there's a pencil mark. Pencil mark right there, so this wood in here needs to come out a little bit. So let me go ahead and do that real quick with a knife. I gotta go get my carving knives out. I will be right okay, back. Okay, I'm back. Um, so we're kind of done with the hatch, at least for a little while. So since we're done with that, we'll put it back in its sheath. Um, safety first. And uh, I'll just set that aside. Now, all I'm going to do is sort of whittle out, like I said, whittle out this shoulder area on this knife. And then just kind of clean up the edges so that I get this thing down to about the size I want. And then... Then I'm going to have to actually thin this a little bit too because this is way, way, obviously way too thick. Uh, so let me go ahead and, um, okay, anyways, to thin this down, I'm going to, I just grab these out of my pack and I keep these two knives in my pack most of the time. Not always this knife, but uh, this is just a regular Mora. I think it's the 106 if I'm not mistaken. But anyways, it's one of the Mora carvers. I always keep some kind of Mora knife in my backpack as a backup knife and as a carving knife. So if it's not the actual carving knives, then I usually keep a, uh, a Mora Classic in my uh, pack. They're like my favorites. I love the wooden handles and just the feel of them. And then, and then of course, the other thing we're gonna use is one of my hand forged Makatagas. And this one's, um, this one's one I made up and then I decided to keep it for myself because I couldn't sell it because it's actually got a little bit, of, a little spot on the handle where the worms had gotten into the wood a long time ago. It didn't hurt the handle at all. It's still a nice solid one, but I figured that if I, if I uh, sent it to somebody like that, they would uh, have a fit and then I'd end up with it back. So I ended up keeping it for myself. So anyways, so Mokotagan. We're going to carve with that a little bit, probably the handle part, and uh, just a regular old classic Mora with a little shorter handle. Um, and then uh, also I have my pocket knife, which the old timer whittler, and I'll use that probably for some of the really detailed stuff. I never had a carving knife with a really short handle like that until I got this pocket knife. And it's only got like a little knife blade on it about an inch long. And I'll tell you what, it's probably one of my favorite carvers, just because that little inch long knife is, it just gives you so much control. In fact, I decided a while back that I was gonna hand forge myself one. I was gonna put basically one of my handles on a uh, blade that's just, just an inch long and uh, handle it for myself. And uh, so that's gonna be a project to come to, but I don't know if I'm gonna do that on video or not. So anyways, let's, uh, Go ahead and let me shut this camera off for a little bit and I will just carve this area out and uh, we'll see how uh, it looks in a few minutes. And you can definitely tell this is somewhat dry hickory because it uh, it is not forgiving. It helps when you got a nice sharp blade though. I gotta be careful with this mock toggle though. I got it set up nice and sharp and sometimes it wants to bite in. That's why I got my hand reverse gripped. So I'm sort of pulling towards me and it gives me a, a chance to do a little bit of this at the same time. Cause this thing, occasionally it'll want to bite in there and take a big ass chunk out. And we're not trying to take big chunks.
and you'll have to turn things around once in a while and really play around with the way the grain's going in this thing. And like I said, this is a homemade axe handle, so it's it's not going to be a, I mean, it's going to be a nice handle, don't get me wrong, and it's going to be a, a well-made handle, but the fact is, is that it came out of a tree that probably wasn't exactly perfect, but at the same time, you know, it uh, it's going to do what we need it to do. I need to get that axe out a little bit and do a little more trimming on this thing. And I'm probably going to shut this thing off, the camera off, here in a little bit, just to keep the video a little bit shorter. Just because of the fact that we don't want this uh, video to get too awful, awful long. Um, my videos get way long as it is, and I know that, and I apologize for that. It's just, I'm always trying to get as much information into a video as I can. And sometimes my videos get long, so. These Makatogans are sweet little tools though. If you don't own one, you need to make yourself one or something. Or buy one off me, advertisement there. But. But they are uh, quite a nice tool to have. I could probably do this whole handle just with this. And uh, oh, I might do that sometime just for fun. Basically, I'm just knocking these corners down a little bit. This whole handle is going to need thinned, but and um. Also, working this out and trying to keep that swell in here too. Um, it's gonna get a little, it's gonna get some smaller, but I'm trying to keep it there for as big as I can for right now just to, uh, just so I remember it's there more than anything. Okay, let me uh, whittle on this a little bit and I'll get back with you. Okay guys, I apologize for uh, the way the first part of this video looked. Uh, I didn't realize there was that much of a glare on there. Um, hopefully I can try to 
darken it up a little bit when I go to edit it, but we'll see what happens. But anyways, for, from here on out, I changed the camera angle. I, I apologize for that. Well, anyways, so we got our handle roughed out now. Um, all I'm doing now is I'm just going over it real easily with the ax and just, uh, just cleaning up things that I want to clean up. And every once in a while, I'll stop, feel it, see what, what it, how it feels in your hand, and I'll go back to carving. And we're almost done with the axe altogether, other than a few things. Sometimes it's easier just to use the axe as much as you can. I know a couple times I said hickory. This is ash, actually. I, I know I've said that in the video a couple times. This is an ash handle, not a hickory handle. I, uh, I'm so used to working with hickory. Every time I refer to a handle, it's always hickory, but this one's ash. And like I said, this came from our ash logs that we split up yesterday. At this point, all I'm doing is going over it and trying to make it feel kind of nice in my hands. After all, this you're the only one that matters when it comes to how it feels. If you're the only one using the axe, well, then it's only you that, ma that has to that has to use it. So you might as well make it how you like it. I'm trying to clean up some of these axe marks at the same time. Not all of them, just some. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I changed up the design a little bit. Instead of having it curve up, I decided to go a little bit more traditional and keep it a little straighter. So, uh, 
that way it's a, at least a little bit traditional basically it's just a straight hatchet handle now and uh, that's fine that's uh, you know, not a bad deal anyways I, I kind of like hack straight handles sometimes better than the curved ones and they're so hard to find nowadays you can't even hardly find a boy's axe with a straight handle no more we won't have that trouble because now we can make our own And I'll get this down to where it, it feels decent in my hand. And uh, then that'll be the end of the video. We'll go to a part three video where I actually fit it to uh, the head of the axe. But right now we're just gonna keep working on this. Axe out real quick for a couple minutes. I'm just gonna work that the other way or it'll split out. A little longer this way, but at least. I'm just kind of rounding this end off. I kind of forgot sort of square. I don't really want a square end.
it's getting to be about where I like it, feel-wise. Okay, let me get back to you. And I'm doing this, I'm looking down the handle and I'm making sure this thing's staying straight on me too. Eyeball straight. I'm not trying to make it a perfect straight, but we're just eyeballing it. Everything's eyeballing it. You can get a pretty good feel for things once you get to use used to looking at something and eyeballing it straight or eyeballing the length of it or whatever. Not that measuring tapes aren't nice, but once you get the hang of this, some of this stuff, you can really get pretty good at guessing about how long this is or that is or how long it needs to be to feel about right. So the hatchet that I've been using in this video, I had a video for it. It's a modified modified Kemp pattern axe hatchet, I should say. And I had done a video on it, and I was gonna list it, and I accidentally deleted the video. So I have another Kemp pattern axe that's a little bit bigger, and I'm debating on whether I should go ahead and modify it because it, it, it would be nice to have a bigger one. If I do, I'll try to videotape that to just the modification part. Um, 
it's kind of a shame because I worked a lot of time, put a lot of time in on that video and then turned around and I was trying to make room in my tablet for another video and I accidentally deleted the whole thing thing. So it is what it is. Okay, so I'm almost to the point where I got it about where I want it. Other than fitting the actual head to this thing. So, let me just basically all I'm going to do is just go around and clean this thing up. Make it look pretty. You may go get a sanding block and sand this just a little bit. This thing will be done, done roughed anyway. We'll have roughed out an axe handle. Basically, it'll be as good as the one you would buy at a store. Actually, better because I made it myself. But as far as fit wise to a head, because the ones at the stores definitely don't fit when you buy them. And even the ones at the stores, most of the time if I buy one and to use it, I go through and I thin the whole thing anyways because I'm not really big, I'm not a real big fan of a, a real thick axe handles. You make an axe handle too thick and then you'll, you'll wonder why your elbows hurt and everything else. It's because it's too thick and it's not absorbing any of the shock. I don't know why they we've gone to thicker handles like that. My guess would be for lawsuits and stuff like that. Probably afraid to get sued. Which I understand that. There's a lot of people out there that like to sue people. Okay, let me uh, take a break here and show you what it looks like when it's all done. Okay, guys, I'm back. Um, I went ahead and finished the handle. It's all roughed out. Uh, it's nowhere near finished, but uh, that's where we're going to stop the video for now. Um, basically, it is uh, a roughed out handle that you could put on just about any axe. But uh, I put a coat of tongue oil on it, and it seems to be just a little damp to me yet. So I put a coat of tongue oil on it. We're going to leave it sit and leave it dry for, oh, probably a week or so. And uh, then we'll get back to, to fitting it to the uh, axe head. And then we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll touch up all the whole thing and just make it look pretty. But for right now... For right now, this is where we're going to stop on it because if it would crack right now or we would fit it to the handle and it would shrink, then we'd be we'd be mad about it. So uh, this is a good place to stop and see what's going to happen to it. And uh, so that's where we're at. Anyways, um, if you like the video, like, subscribe, and share. And I will put a couple of pictures on it uh, at the end of the video too. So thank you.